While we all have experienced optical concepts like reflection, mirrors, and lenses, how do we use physics to characterize the behavior of light? Before learning about the different phenomena in this optics unit, we first need to get a better grasp of light itself. Light, formerly known as electromagnetic radiation, is formed by the oscillations of electric and magnetic fields. Despite light lying on a spectrum of many different types, the speed of light, regardless of type, is a constant C, or around 300 million meters per second. Finally, the relationship between the velocity or speed of light and the frequency and wavelength of light is shown by this equation here, though this equation will be solely plug and chug for your test. While light in our homes or classrooms usually shines in all directions, this unit will focus on single light rays and how they interact with different objects, starting first with a change of medium. Whether this be a laser fired from air into a glass prism, or a flashlight shone onto a lake, whenever light reaches a boundary between two substances, a couple of things will always happen. The first part of this interaction is called reflection. Some of the light will bounce off the interface and reflect back. The direction of this reflected beam will always make an angle with the perpendicular, or normal, of the interface equal to the angle of the original light beam where it came from. The second part is known as refraction, where light is bent as it travels from one medium to the other. The angle of this refracted light beam is given by Snell's law shown here, where each n is a property of the material called its index of refraction. A more abstract phenomenon related to light is called diffraction. Essentially, through a concept known as Huygens principle, light that passes through tiny slits actually diffracts, or spreads out. In addition, waves like light interfere with one another, meaning their bright and dark spots can cancel each other out or intensify one another. While you don't need to know too much about the derivation or math behind these concepts, let's take a look at arguably the most famous diffraction pattern, that of Young's double slit experiment. This setup includes light shining through two tiny slits a distance d away from each other, allowing the diffraction pattern to shine on a wall a distance l away. Through some trigonometry and approximations which aren't covered in the scope of this course, the pattern of brightness on the wall will look something like this, where each peak's height from the center, y, is given by this equation, where m is an integer and lambda is the wavelength of light. The final part of optics in AP Physics 2 is known as ray optics, which deals with light rays interacting with different kinds of mirrors and lenses. In other words, in these problems, an object will be placed a distance away from one of these mirrors or lenses, and it's our job to describe the resulting image. Mathematically, this equation here will be the most useful. This equation draws a relationship between the distance between the object and mirror or lens, the distance of the resulting image from this mirror or lens, and the property of the mirror or lens known as focal length. In addition, the magnification factor is defined as the absolute value of the height of the image divided by the object, or as the absolute value of the image distance over object distance. The visual way to describe these situations, however, is through ray diagrams. So let's first look at this object placed in front of a concave mirror with the focal point that lies here. To draw ray diagrams for mirrors, simply draw one line from the top of the object parallel to what's known as the principal axis, which then reflects off the mirror through the focus. Next, draw a second ray that goes through the focus, which reflects off the mirror parallel to the principal axis. The intersection of these two reflected rays is where the top of the image will lie. This diagram helps us see the location, orientation, size, and type of image that is produced. Here, the resulting image is closer to the mirror, inverted, smaller, and real, which means that the rays of light converge to a single point. Now, sometimes, like with this convex mirror here, following our ray diagramming process, one line parallel that reflects through the focus, and another line that aims towards the focus then reflects parallel, produces two rays that diverge, or never meet at one point. This is what's known as a virtual image. To reconcile this problem, simply extend these rays backwards the other way, which I like to do with dotted lines to remind me of its virtual nature, and the intersection of these virtual rays is where the image will be produced. A near identical process can be followed with the two types of lenses, converging and diverging lenses. For both cases, starting with converging, the lens actually has two focal points, due to them having two rounded edges instead of one, and the points we'll use will change depending on what type of lens we have. For converging lenses, our first step, or a parallel line that bends to go through the focus, will go through the focus on the opposite side, as our converging lens wants to converge the light towards the center. Our step two, through the focus and coming out parallel, will use the other focus. For diverging lenses, however, our first step will actually use the focus on the same side as the object, as diverging lenses want to diverge or spread out the light rays. For the second step, we'll logically use the other focus, producing an image like this. Optics at first can seem quite tricky, as it's nothing like we've ever dealt with in physics before. 
However, after grasping the general concepts and sticking to the equations and ray diagrams in this video, all the different scenarios and concepts will become much clearer. With that, you can feel good about learning the basics of physical and geometric optics.